By now, Stalin is high up on the Tsarist secret police's most wanted list. But he is not yet the murderous psychopath he will become. He falls in love with Ekaterina Svanitsa, the sister of a fellow communist, and in secret, they marry. She was what the Georgians called a baba. She, she was the woman who was at home and just provided the creature comforts. Katerina bears Stalin a son, Yakov. But just months later, she contracts typhus and dies. When Stalin's first wife died, he was absolutely shattered. He said that when she died, all my feelings for people died with her. She melted my stony heart. Now the shutters start to come down. Stalin decides that no one will be allowed into his heart again. It's a trait which will serve him well on his rise to power. By 1906, Tsar Nicholas II's regime is on the rocks after a wave of strikes, economic chaos, and an attempted revolution. In a small concession to democracy, he sets up a parliament called the Duma. Lenin's so-called Bolshevik party wins seats there, though he continues his illegal struggle against the system. Stalin is still a wanted man, spending years in prison and exile. But his friend, Roman Malinovsky, becomes the leader of the Bolsheviks in the Duma. In 1912, Stalin escapes from exile and heads for the capital, looking for a safe base of operations. He immediately came to see his friend Malinovsky. Stalin likes Malinovsky and trusts him. A big mistake. Malinovsky was in fact a Tsarist secret agent. Malinovsky is the most highly paid double agent the Tsar's Okhrana secret police has ever had. He invites Stalin to a fundraising dinner. And Stalin agrees to go. Malinovsky must have been a very, very good actor. Because the Ukraine would have set up the meeting and they would have told him what to say and how to proceed so that there would be no suspicions aroused in Stalin's mind. The dinner is a trap. He's betrayed by a party member. He's betrayed by a fellow Bolshevik. He's sentenced to exile. He takes with him this burning conviction that he'd given trust to someone who could not be trusted. The betrayal has a colossal impact on Stalin. He starts to believe that even those who are closest to him, even the most loyal and committed communists, may be traitors. The interesting thing about the Malinovsky story is it explains why later in Stalin's life, um, he distrusted everybody because virtually anybody, even the leader of the Bolshevik party in the, in the Duma, could be a secret agent and a traitor. Consumed with bitterness, Stalin is sent into exile in Siberia, on the edges of the Arctic Circle. He is largely ignored by his communist colleagues, who this time do not bother to help him escape. In Stalin's mind, there must have been a lot of anger about the way he'd been treated, the way his comrades had betrayed him. They didn't give him his due, so they belittled him, if you like, and they put him down. So therefore, all this would be stewing in uh, Stalin's mind. How can I take revenge on these people? I'm a much more important person than they think, and I'm going to show them that. For four years, Stalin is stuck in the frozen wasteland, his heart becoming as cold and hard as the wilderness around him. Food was in very short supply, and it said that every night the wolves gathered round looking for the bits of food that might be left. 
the prowling wolves will haunt Stalin to the end of his days. A common theme in his doodles was, was ravening wolves. And he put them around the, the page, the teeth, bad shape. Churchill later said there's something wolf-like about it. And it may be that he wasn't, that wasn't just a, a, a happy metaphor. He, there was actually this Wolverine element. <laughs>